Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this Open Infra webinar. Uh, we are uh, having a discussion with Sardinia Systems today, and Kenneth Tan is with us. Um, my name is Thierry Carrez. I am the VP of Engineering for the Open Infrastructure Foundation. And uh, I'll let Ken introduce himself and Sardinia Systems. Thierry, thanks a lot for having us today. Much appreciated. Uh, my name is Kenneth Tan. I'm the uh, executive director at Sardina Systems. Um, so for those of you in the audience who may not be aware of us, um, Sardina Systems is a uh, cloud platform software company. Uh, we were founded back in 2014. Um, our product, FishOS, built on OpenStack, Kubernetes, and Ceph uh, to enable enterprise to essentially turn bare metal servers into flexible cloud platforms that can be very easily consumed by developers and application operators. So with FishOS, the enterprise operator can very rapidly, very easily deploy a cloud platform that comes pre-integrated with automation to drive scalable and highly efficient operations as well as upgrading system in a reliable zero downtime manner. Uh, well, um, so I've been involved with OpenStack since uh, the creation of the project in, in 2010. And prior to that, I was, I was working on, uh, at Canonical on uh, Ubuntu server. And the, the, the key behind open infrastructure, my main focus on open, on open infrastructure is about making sure open source is used as a means to spread innovation globally. And today, if you look at, um, at like the landscape for open source, everyone is, is open those days. And so what do we actually mean by open infrastructure? Um, open infrastructure for, for me is, is open source solutions for providing infrastructure. So when you, when you look at the modern application stack, you have basically two separate roles emerging. Um, you have the application DevOps on one side who develops and deploys their application. And you have the infrastructure provider on the other side who maintains a programmable infrastructure for those application developers and deployers to deploy on. And that, that infrastructure provider can work for a public cloud company and sell infrastructure as a service, or they can be in-house in charge of uh, maintaining that infrastructure for, for the, the internal company needs. And so open infrastructure is all about giving open source solutions to those infrastructure providers, whether they, they want it for a private infrastructure or for building public infrastructure services. And uh, eight years ago, we, we formed the OpenStack Foundation. And um, at that point, open infrastructure was not really even a concept. But today, with the success of OpenStack, the ecosystem that formed around OpenStack, open infrastructure is very real. And we see projects like OpenStack or Kata Containers or Ceph or Kubernetes even evolve in that global open infrastructure space. And that's the reason why we we uh, formed the Open Infrastructure Foundation as a replacement for the OpenStack Foundation to better align with this open infrastructure movement. And uh, in Sardinia Systems has been a corporate sponsor of, of the OpenStack Foundation for a very long time now. And uh, naturally you signed up as a founding silver member of that new foundation. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, it's great to see that Sardinia Systems is very involved in our community and participating in our global open infrastructure summits, but also in all the local open infrastructure days that, that we've been running in, in Europe and, uh, and around the world. Indeed, indeed. So Europe is very much our, the focus for uh, Sardinia systems. Um, uh, we are a European company started in Europe and most, most of our uh, uh, Activities today are also uh, very much in Europe, though today we also have uh, customer sites elsewhere in the world, in Asia Pac, in, uh, in Africa and uh, uh, North America. Um, uh, in one of the uh, recent webinars that we had uh, involving a, a customer, um, it was about uh, uh, 
how do we build large scale infrastructure? Um, uh, in discussions, um, it is certainly without doubt now that the most established, most mature solution for managing infrastructure as service is on OpenStack. Using OpenStack to help address some of the uh, key infrastructure challenges that enterprises face. And uh, these covers the areas such as reliability, complexity, system efficiency, scalability, or rather the limited scalability of, of the, uh, the other solutions and uh, problems of uh, low performance. So what we are aiming to do with FishOS is to take the full distribution of OpenStack, productize it. And by productizing it, what we mean is that we round it up with a full set of operations tools, deployment tools, as well as upgrade tools. So the overarching objective is to simplify cloud infrastructure deployment, operation and upgrade, so as to drive flexible, scalable and efficient clouds that ultimately improves the utilization, lowers cost and uh, increases reliability for the, organ for the users. And uh, so now, if we were to uh, break the uh, life cycle into three key parts, the deploy phase, operate and upgrade phases, okay? Now in the uh, deploy phase, operators are most interested in getting to a production ready system easily, quickly. It is not in the organization's interest to be spending multiple months, multiple quarters to get to the point where users can use the system. And with FishOS, our target is to take the, uh, the, the bare metal servers into production within an afternoon. This is what we regularly see now. And uh, once the system is up and running, we are entering the operate phase. Um, and as a production system, this should be the largest part of the uh, three phases of life cycle. So here, the operator benef would benefit from having all the key infrastructure operations tools being pre-integrated. It works out of the box, ready for production out of the box not having to, again, spend multiple months, multiple quarters to uh, pro productize the uh, system within the organization. And uh, now six months later, there's a new release of OpenStack. Users love this. The rapid innovation, the new functionalities, new capabilities, they are simply unmatched and they're fantastic. But for the operators, these are often seen as additional challenges. So with FishOS Upgrader, we answer these challenges very simply. We provide a zero downtime upgrade solution. I recall that uh, we were the first to introduce zero downtime upgrade for OpenStack. It was during the Mitaka upgrade cycle. And we've consistently been providing zero downtime upgrade to our customers since then. And it's, um, it's really great to, to see uh, companies taking the, the open source code and turning, turning it into a, a production ready stack. Um, the way I've been mentioning earlier that uh, with the rename of, um, to, the, to the new name Open Infrastructure Foundation, we are moving to support open infrastructure beyond OpenStack, but uh, OpenStack is still at the very core of our efforts. And it's true that today it's, uh, it's well established. It's no longer like exciting, it's very stable. It's a very proven platform for delivering infrastructure as a service. Um, 
And in 2021, it's still one of the three most active open source projects in the world in terms of number of changes merged. So there's a lot of activity, a lot of changes. And like you said, um, release every six months to account for, for all that and push those new features and, and support for more hardware into the, into the stack. It handles today more than 15 million CPU cores of computing power in production. Uh, so it has seen a lot of adoption, especially in the telecom industry worldwide, but also research or public clouds in Europe. Uh, but today we are seeing it used across every industry verticals. And uh, in terms of the technical position, it sits above hardware and turns it into programmable infrastructure which uh, then cloud-aware applications and orchestrators like Kubernetes can leverage. But you're right in saying that uh, it's a very uh, powerful software stack, but at the same time, it's also very complex. And so um, being able to productize those, um, this, this software into something that is easily operatable is really key. And uh, I'm actually interested in, in learning uh, why um, your customers choose OpenStack for infrastructure as a service, Ken? Um, so over the past 10 years, we've seen a number of different contenders in the uh, uh, infrastructure as service space. Some of them open source, some of them are not. And some of them try to be open source but why could debate? And, uh, uh, but what we have seen is that uh, Open, OpenStack is today the most popular for building infrastructure as a service. Um, it's provided flexibility that is simply unmatched. The code velocity in OpenStack is just unmatched. There isn't in an alternative that is bringing innovation as quickly, as rapidly as OpenStack. Um, and uh, it allows the, uh, the operators, like you said, to take bare metal into consumable cloud. And this allows the uh, end users to benefit from um, faster, easier, more flexible work workloads and uh, ultimately for the organization, it's better cost efficiency. Yeah, um, the, the and cost organizations are not in, sorry. Um, the cost on. efficiency is really like uh, the key driver today for, for more open stack adoption. And so I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned it. Certainly, um, and organizations are, built, are not building toys. Yeah, and there was, there was a phase of, of experimentation, I would say, at the start, but now it's really a, a rational business decision to adopt those, mm -hmm. those, those frameworks because it makes it economic sense for the company to, um, to have at least a significant part of their infrastructure uh, being run with those kind of systems. Um, do you have like specific examples of what your customers are doing using OpenStack? Um, sure, sure, sure. So our customers today are in domains such as uh, finance, bioinformatics, telco hosting service providers, um, as well as HPC research, and academia and government. Um, and uh, these organizations, whether they are uh, national scale systems or uh, uh, the enterprise clouds, in, at uh, publicly listed enterprises. Um, the cloud infrastructure, they are invariably core to their business. This is not a sideshow. This is not a kick the tire system. This is core to the organization, core to the business. So the, to mention a few of them. So one of our customer sites is the uh, is Danby, the German National Bioinformatics Infrastructure, um, whereby they're providing national scale cloud infrastructure to enable bioinformatics infrastructure, research infrastructure for uh, big data research in life sciences. 
Um, also in Germany, uh, the Cyber Valley Machine Learning Cloud. This is a, a premier AI and machine learning initiative in Germany. Um, here, FishOS powers the uh, platform which integrates GPU accelerated systems, um, uh, bare metal and VM-based workloads, as well as Kubernetes in both bare metal and VMs, ultimately to drive AI and machine learning workloads. And uh, <clears throat> elsewhere, we uh, power several clouds enterprise-wide at uh, Redcom, um, and a leading 5G technology supplier to major telcos. And uh, uh, perhaps less usual, um, in another situation, FishOS powers the platform that hosts amongst other organizations a certain country's national orchestra. I guess you can't tell us which one. <laughs> <laughs> Not today. Okay. Uh, I also know that you have uh, an offering around remotely managed private clouds, uh, like a, a big telco company in Israel. So, um, uh, Sardina, we position ourselves very much as a product player. And uh, uh, when it comes to providing services, we tend to uh, engage services partners to enable remotely managed private clouds. Um, but uh, the, uh, this particular situation in Israel, so the customer, Radcom, uh, develops market leading network intelligence solutions for, for telco customers. And, uh, so if you look at the customers list, this includes a number of the tier one telcos in the world. Now, uh, while the key value proposition for uh, FishOS is that the system is very simple to deploy, operate and upgrade, Radcom still asked us to help operate the system. Um, and uh, we had a number of discussions with, with Radcom and whilst we normally engage partners to deliver remotely managed private clouds, we all agree that in this situation, we would remotely manage the system for Redcom. Um, so we started with one system in Tel Aviv. And uh, over time, we gained trust of Redcom and we expanded to additional systems, replacing other systems that were then existing within the organization. Um, today, FishOS runs clouds enterprise-wide at Redcom. So for Redcom, the developers benefited greatly from having stable, reliable, flexible clouds within an enterprise and ultimately helping increase organizational productivity, accelerate innovation. Um, uh, um, we see the uh, relationship between Sardina and Redcom to be a, a very symbiotic relationship. Our team is very much an extension to Redcom's team and we succeed only if Redcom is successful. And our customers are not building toys. Yeah, that's definitely infrastructure for serious workloads in production and it's another important focus for us uh, is really um, that th we build software that runs in production, not you know software that just exists in a Git repository for nobody else to use. And Absolutely. Um, I guess another question I would have is, is uh, what kind of challenges and benefits uh, has your, your customer faced, the Radcom customer? So, uh... <clears throat> When we started the journey with Radcom, um, we understood that whilst they uh, appreciated flexibility that can be achieved with the cloud platform, there were multitudes of unsolved challenges around reliability. And the, uh, there were existing systems in the environment. And we saw that those systems had unnecessary complexities features 
that may look pretty in charts and diagrams, but certainly don't help in production. Um, and uh, we very quickly deployed FishOS in an initial system, rapidly delivered reliable, flexible, and efficient environments for the organization. And users very quickly migrated onto the, to the platform and uh, uh, they saw that, aha, this is stable, this is good. I'm not gonna face uh, uh, unknowns working in this environment, fantastic. And uh, so uh, over time, we worked with Bradcom to grow the uh, environment and to uh, deploy additional systems that ran that today run on FishOS. Um, <clears throat> uh, and throughout the engagement, Redcom has also seen Sardina's support model ensures that problems are rapidly solved and always do. Okay, we're, uh, we're coming to toward the end of this interview. Um, is there any, any question you have for me? Yeah, Terry, um, what do you see as the uh, future for OpenStack and open infrastructure? That's a good question. Um, I guess, so we basically launched the Open Infrastructure Foundation to build the next decade of open infrastructure. And uh, for this next decade, I'm seeing two trends lately that mm -hmm. will drive further adoption of open infrastructure in the near future. Um, the first one is data sovereignty. Um, mm -hmm. with, um, Europe really needs to build a viable alternative to US and China-based public clouds if it wants to retain uh, its sovereignty in the 21st century. And we don't really have giant companies like in the US, but we do have a vibrant ecosystem of smaller companies and Sardina is one of them. And by using widely available open infrastructure software and especially OpenStack, those actors can federate and interoperate. Um, so I see this as a major driver for future adoption of, uh, of open infrastructure in general and OpenStack in particular. Uh, the second driver is, is really the realization, and I mentioned it earlier, the realization that while public cloud really makes sense at the start of a company, staying on the public cloud long-term is really eating the, your, mar your margins to, to the point where repatriation to uh, the private cloud makes sense. Um, there actually was uh, a recent article by partners at Andreessen Horowitz on how that impacts company valuation, um, outlining that repatriation results in one third to one half the cost of running equivalent workloads in the public cloud. And so as more and more companies and investors realize this, we'll see more demand for open source solutions to provide infrastructure in-house and uh, OpenStack is a major actor in, in that space. So I really, um, I'm really uh, looking forward towards this next decade of open infrastructure. It's uh, more relevant than ever and I actually invite everyone to join the Open Infrastructure Foundation. Uh, it's free for individuals to join. The URL is openinfra.dev slash join. And uh, it's really easy to, to join and, and be in the loop of future open infrastructure events. Maybe um, I have a question for you then <laughs> in return, Ken. Uh, mm -hmm. How do you see the foundation, the Open Infrastructure Foundation, helping Sardina's business and your users? Yeah, you, you mentioned about uh, data sovereignty and uh, uh, the cost aspect in running a uh, running private clouds. And uh, certainly data sovereignty is a key issue, data privacy. Uh, put it very simply, if you are a uh, 
a com a, a, an enterprise, can you answer to your customers where their data ultimately sits? And would your answer be one that your customers would be happy to hear? And uh, in relation to uh, your point about uh, cost, um, we recently saw a uh, customer's workload um, running in private cloud uh, amounted to approximately 30% uh, of what the same workload cost them in public clouds. It's a massive saving. And uh, I think from Sardina, uh, we can bring the voice of our customers and to say that we're very grateful for the entire OpenStack community in, in supporting the evolution and the day-to-day -day performance. And uh, this has allowed us to uh, further build automated management tools on top of this powerful platform that our customers benefit from. And indeed, our customers' customers benefit from. And in Europe, data sovereignty, there simply isn't another choice, but to ensure data is where they are going to be secure, private for the customers. And uh, in this regard, OpenStack is now the platform of choice for enterprises to rapidly, reliably deploy, operate, and manage their cloud infrastructure. So our mission is to help operators address these challenges in operating OpenStack, Kubernetes, and Ceph and scale and drive down the TCO with Sardin Official S. Yeah, and I agree that the main challenge, uh, the main objection to, to this uh, using more of, of private clouds in, in companies is really uh, the difficulty of running the stack. And so I can see how an ecosystem of companies like Sardin Systems with distributions and services that help uh, people bridge that gap in competency is really uh, is really key to that next stage of open infrastructure. So I, I think that's a good conclusion for our, our quick discussion. Um, do you have any anything to add? No, and much appreciated for having us. Well, uh, thanks again for joining us, and um, thank you for. Uh, for sharing your insights on Sardina systems and the open infrastructure landscape in general. Um, it was Ken and Thierry from uh, uh, the OpenStack community talking to you about open infrastructure today. Thanks again for watching this and uh, see you next time. Thank you. See you next time. Bye.